Welcome to Construction Genius. This is Eric Anderton. And I'm recording this during the playing of the Euro 2020 soccer tournament. And it's being played in 2021, as you probably know, because of the COVID pandemic. And earlier, probably about six, five days ago, six days ago now, no, maybe seven, it was the round of 16. And England, England's my team. I was born in England. And so I, I root for England. And England's been through a lot of pain when it comes to soccer. They won the World Cup in 1966, beating Germany 4-2 in the final. And since then, they have not been in any World Cup or European Cup finals until this week, Sunday coming up here, they're going to be playing uh, Italy in the final after defeating Denmark 2-1 yesterday. But I want to take you back to a couple of games earlier to the round of 16 game where they were playing Germany. Germany, their arch rival. Germany, who we can never beat in a tournament, at least not since 1966 when we beat them 4-2 in the final. And England was playing. Germany was kind of a weaker team, but you know that mental roadblock that people have when it comes to sports, you know, teams have, oh, we can never beat Germany because Germany always beat us in these knockout stages. Crowd was going nuts. Raheem Sterling was on the ball. He passed it out to the left. It got passed back into him and he scored a goal and the crowd just went crazy. Raheem Sterling is a very good player, plays for Manchester City. And right there, right after he scored the goal is a time of great jubilation, but it's also the time of great danger. And following the goal, maybe two or three minutes after that, if not even sooner, he, he gave the ball away in midfield. The goal scorer, Raheem Sterling, gave the ball away to the Germans. There was a through ball. And Thomas Muller, who was an excellent player, was, was away on a breakaway one-on-one -on -one against the goalkeeper. And it's so interesting in sports how many times after the greatest success, there can be the greatest failures. It's a time of great danger when guards can let, uh, get let down and things can occur. Goals can be scored against you right after you've scored a goal. And a similar thing often happens in business and specifically around hiring people. It's really interesting. Think about when you've hired someone, you go through the pain and the agony of sourcing the talent, interviewing the talent, taking them through assessments. By the way, if you don't do assessments when you are hiring people that uh, generate questions for you that you can ask them, assessments that are specifically designed to give you data around the position that you're hiring, you really need to do that. Feel free to contact me on my website, Construction Genius. I can direct you to assessments that I use with my clients that are extremely powerful. But you've done the assessments, I'm assuming. You've gone through the interview process. You've sourced the talent. You've made the hiring decision. And then you breathe a big sigh of relief. And you say to yourself, phew, I can now go back to my real job. I can now go back to winning projects, building projects whatever the case may be, and you let your guard down and you fail to follow through with the new hire. And as a result of that, they fail. That's the moment of danger right after a moment of success when you've just hired someone. So what can you do to avoid this moment of danger and ensure that your new hires succeed? That is exactly what we're going to talk about today in this episode of Construction genius. This is Eric Anderton, and you're listening to Construction Genius, a leadership masterclass. Thomas Edison said that genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. If you're a construction leader, you know all about the perspiration, and this show is all about the 1% inspiration that you can add to your hard work to help you to improve your leadership. Three things I'd like to cover here in the episode. Number one, buddy them up. Number two, ride around. And number three, 90 day focus. Those are three things that you can do to ensure that your new hires succeed. Let's start by looking at buddy them up. Now, for my international viewers and listeners, a buddy is simply a friend. That's what we call them in America is buddies. Uh, when I was a kid, I spent a lot of my early years moving around from place to place. So I was born in England. When I was about four or five, I moved to France, then to Germany, then to the United States, and then back to England, and then finally back to the United States when I was 15, and I've lived here ever since. Now, 
That means from, from age four or five to 15, I went to a bunch of different schools and I got really used to um, meeting new people, um, getting comfortable in new environments and you know, being disrupted, basically going from place to place to place. Now, not everyone is like that. And what schools do, which is very interesting, is when a new pupil comes in, particularly in the middle of the year, let's say, they'll often buddy them up with someone to show them around the school and get them comfortable with a new environment. And that's exactly what you should do when you have a new hire, if you don't want them to slip through the cracks. Get them a buddy, okay? So you want to identify your buddies. Who are the people who represent your culture? very well. You want to um, link up your new hires with those folks. And the buddies can do some things that are really, really important. Number one, they can begin to tell them the truth about your business. Now, when you're hiring someone, it's very much like you know when a, a guy is courting a gal and um, looking to really get him interest, get her interested in him. Maybe he's aiming for marriage. And so it's kind of like the, the, the dating phase you know, when you're hiring someone and then you get into the honeymoon phase after you've hired them and things are still going very well. But um, sometimes on honeymoons, things can go pretty badly, right? <laughs> so you want someone who's going to tell them the truth about the business, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Because the fact is when someone comes into your uh, company, they're going to see that eventually. And so you want someone who's been through that, who's navigated the difficulties of working in your business, because every business has difficulties. And you want someone who understands the culture, that can show them the best of what's going around in, in your culture, and also give them some indicators of what some of the landmines are in your business. And so you want to be able to, to bring someone in who can just tell them the truth, get them a buddy who they can talk to perhaps a peer that they can really develop a relationship with. Make sure that this buddy takes them out to lunch, gets them involved in the company culture. And you particularly want to do this if you had a competitive hiring process that involved internal candidates. Okay, so if you have those internal candidates who are still in your business and you've hired from the outside, then that buddy can really be that buffer because you know what happens, right? If someone gets passed over an internal candidate, it can create jealousy, it can create resentment, and you want to make sure that you um, smooth out that friction as much as possible. Now, you can't always do that. So if you're bringing in an outside hire, be ready. And I was just chatting with one of my clients about this uh, this week. Be ready for the people who got passed over to say, well, you know what? I don't think this is a place for me anymore. Nevertheless, though, that buddy system can help to smooth over some of those difficulties with the transition. So after you've buddied them up, the next thing you want to do is you want to do ride arounds. Now, if this person is reporting to you directly, then you want to make sure that you're doing the ride arounds with this person. If they have another uh, person they're reporting to, their reporting manager should be doing the ride arounds. And this is a tremendous way for them to get practically acquainted with the business and also comfortable with the person that they are reporting to. One of the great ways of learning is by osmosis. So the first thing you want to do is you want to get that guy or gal in your truck or in the truck of the person they're reporting to get them out to a job site and take them for a job walk. Let them see you interacting with the guys and gals who are running the work, with your supers, with the, the subcontractors on site, with the owners. If possible, show them how you handle conflicts. Perhaps get them in on one of those difficult conversations at a job site or with a client. Show them how the field and the office interact with each other. Really give them a sense of what it's like to be involved in your business and how you, as a leader in your business, interact with both internal folks and external folks. 
That ride around is crucial. And it's particularly important for PEs, uh, project engineers, young people who are coming out of um, a college and starting in your business, because it's easy to see these guys and gals as just cogs in the machine, you know, just go out there and get your stuff done. And fair enough, they need to go out, get their stuff done, prove themselves to you before you start moving them up. But you really want to get them comfortable. If they're quality people, if you've done a good job hiring, I'm assuming that you've got someone in place who is relatively inexpensive, who you want to develop over time and you want to invest in. So ride around with them and take time developing them. Okay. So you buddy them up with someone who's perhaps a peer. You then have them ride around with their reporting manager. And if it's you in that case, ride around with them and show them the ropes. And then the last thing you want to do, and this is, this is fundamental. And this is a very practical step that you can take is give them a clear 90 day focus, a clear 90 day focus. And that's where you want to be able to sit down with them and say, what is the most important thing you want to accomplish in your first 90 days? And I have a tool that I use with my clients. I call it the 90 day high performance dashboard. And it's a great tool to use for new hires to make sure that you're getting the most out of them. And it has some specific areas to it. And I'm going to explain the 90-day dashboard to you. I'm going to put a link in the show notes so that you can click on that link and download the dashboard for yourself. And the best way to do it is this. What I'd like you to do is I'm assuming you're very clear on the role that this person is going to play and what you'd like them to accomplish in the first 90 days. And I would like you to write out your own 90-day dashboard for them. And I'll explain it in a minute. But then I also want them to write out that 90-day dashboard for themselves. And then I want you guys to meet together and see, compare and contrast your dashboards so that you can figure out where you're in alignment where they need perhaps some tune, fine tuning in terms of where they're focusing their activity. Okay, now let me explain the dashboard to you because it's a very simple tool, but it's very powerful. The first thing at the top is going to be a rally cry. And the rally cry is the one thing that they need to accomplish in the first 90 days for them to be able to say with any credibility, I had a good 90 days. Okay, so I'll, I'll give you an example. Let's say you're bringing on someone who is um, in business development. One of my clients recently did this. And this person, they're going to be in business development, but they, they're not too familiar with the construction industry. And so their 90-day rally cry is learn the business, learn the business. So what is the rally cry going to be for that new hire? They need to be crystal clear on what is that one thing that they need to accomplish in their first 90 days. And the rally cry is very important because if they're clear on it and you're clear on it and you guys agree on it together, you know what it does? It gives your new hire confidence and clarity on what they need to be pursuing every single day. The problem with a lot of companies is their onboarding process doesn't work well. The new hire sits there, they get their logons to their computers, and you know they get their new phone, and they get their truck, and then they just kind of you know, begin to slowly slip through the tracks. You, wanna, you want these folks hitting the ground and running. And that rally cry is really, really important. So it's something that they know very clearly in their minds what they need to accomplish. And then after you've identified the rally cry, you want to get um, a very clear picture of some initiatives that they need to focus on that are going to drive that rally cry. So typically three or at the most four specific initiatives that if they accomplish those initiatives, it will help to drive the rally cry. So let's say you bring on a new project manager and they need to develop relationships with the superintendent, let's say, or they need to get to know your software programs. Perhaps they haven't known, uh, don't know them before. Uh, They haven't used them before. And maybe they need to build relationships with clients. Whatever the, the initiatives are that are going to drive the rally cry, you want to identify those and make sure that people understand them. Okay. Then after the initiatives are identified, you want to have metrics that are linked to those initiatives. Okay. So you have to figure out how you're going to measure their performance in the first 90 days as objectively as possible. They need to know how they're doing. You need to know how they're doing. And so those metrics are very, very important. You can then hold them accountable for the progress they're making in the execution of their initiatives, 
which will lead them to achieving their rally cry. And those metrics can be date-based, they can be number-based, but you need to identify them so that you know whether or not someone is winning or losing as a new hire in your organization. The next part of the dashboard is relationships. And we all know in construction that relationships are fundamental to the success of any construction business. And again, if you've got a new kid on the block, it's essential that they begin to develop relationships quickly. Some people understand this instinctively. Some people are less adept or adept at building relationships. So you want them to understand the relationships they need to develop internally, up, down, and across the organization, and externally with subs and with clients and with vendors. And I would really encourage you to make sure that that person is focused in the first 90 days, not only at developing themselves technically and getting comfortable with the processes of your business, but make sure that they are comfortable developing the necessary relationships, which are going to be key to their success. And then that leads to the last part of the dashboard, which is the development opportunities. People thrive when they're clear on what they need to achieve, how they're going to achieve it, how they're going to be measured, what relationships are important, and when they're giving opportunities to develop themselves. So one development opportunity for many people when they're first coming into an organization, obviously, is learning software programs, perhaps. Um, a development opportunity could be technical, it could be a leadership development opportunity, a relational opportunity. You might have, as part of your first 90 days, a real deep dive into the culture of the organization. This is how we do things here. And you may have classes that you've already developed for that. If you don't have classes for that, feel free to contact me and I'll give you some advice as far as that's concerned. But whatever the case is, you want them to be clear on those development opportunities. All right, so go to the show notes, download the dashboard. It'll give you a great tool that you can use with your folks to make sure they don't slip through the cracks in the first 90 days. And remember, you've got those aspects to the dashboard, your rally cry, your initiatives, your metrics, your relationships, and your development opportunities. Now, this is the secret that a lot of people miss in the first 90 days. If a new hire is going to be successful, you have to commit to meeting with them every week if possible, or every other week for 30 to 60 minutes, dashboard in hand and sitting down with them and asking them what's working, what's not, what do we need to do differently? What are you learning? You need to spend time with your new hires. You can't just assume that they're going to get things done. Remember that fatal flaw. After you've hired someone, you wipe your brow and you think, man, I am done. Now I can get back to work. Hold on a second. If you've hired someone, making sure that they're successful in your organization is a key part of your job. Because who is responsible for the success of new hires? Well, first, they are. And that's why they need to do the dashboard and commit to being held accountable. Secondly, you are. And when I say you, I mean their reporting manager is responsible. You or they, whoever the reporting manager is, need to meet with their, the new hires every week or every other week. And then who else is responsible for their success? We are. That means your whole company. It's so important for new hires that the whole company embraces them. And they're going, your, your company will be driven by your example. You set the tone for the new hires. So if you're just the type of person who hires someone and then forgets about them, don't be surprised if they fall through the cracks in your organization. But if you have a disciplined, caring approach to making sure your new hires thrive, that will then be um, communicated throughout your entire organization. Okay, now let me just review these things. Again, you're bringing someone on board. You're in that moment of danger. You want them to succeed. So buddy them up, ride around, and then give them that 90-day focus using a tool like the High Performance Dashboard. Now, I know that you're very busy. And in your mind, you're thinking, I don't have time for all of this. And let me say this. If you have that attitude, don't be surprised when good people fail in your business. Don't be surprised when 90 days down the road, you're thinking, I just hired Fred Bloggs. I'm paying him 150,000 bucks. He should be balling out. And in a way, you're right. But on the other hand, if you haven't given time 
to make sure that that person is focused for their first 90 days, some of that responsibility falls on you. Because you might be thinking again, I don't have time and shouldn't they figure out, figure stuff out? And, and again, you're right. They should figure stuff out. But if you want them to really ramp up their success quickly, focus in on the first 90 days and think through buddying them up, riding around with them, and then giving them that 90-day focus. Okay, so back to the soccer game now. England had just scored. Raheem Sterling was the one who scored the goal. And then a couple minutes later, he gave the ball away. Thomas Muller, uh, one of the great German players, was on a breakaway with one-on-one with Jordan Pickford. And you could see, I, I, I tell you, I was just standing there waiting for Germany to score. If you look on the video, you see Raheem Sterling kind of rolled up in a ball, right? Really bummed out because he knew it was his fault that Thomas Muller was on this breakaway. And you see Thomas Muller take the shot and it beats the goalkeeper and it goes just wide of the post and the goal didn't score. England went on to score a few minutes later and they won the game 2-0. Now, they got lucky in that situation. And maybe you've gotten lucky in the past too. You've hired someone, you've just put them in place and you know hope that they do well and they do well. But it's better to be diligent than just to rely on luck. And I want to encourage you, when you hire someone, ensure that they're a success by spending the first 90 days really focused on getting them acclimatized in your company and focused on what's most important so that they can get off to a good start with your company. All right, so your next steps, get them that buddy. Make a list of who are the buddies that I want to be able to um, get people related to when they get hired into my company. Number two, commit to those ride-arounds. Those ride-arounds are absolutely essential. You'll get to know someone. See how they do as they're interacting with the guys and the gals on the job site, with your clients, with your subs, with your vendors. Um, Download the dashboard. It's free. Just click the link in the show notes. Get that dashboard. And then make sure that you're meeting with the new hires weekly or biweekly. Okay. Now, if you have any questions about this, I'll put a link in the show notes where you can contact me and I can talk you through some of this stuff if you're interested, because I I use this with my coaching clients all the time. I, I was inspired to do this podcast based on a coaching call that I had with the president of a construction company. So feel free to contact me if you need any help with your particular executive leadership or executive leaders in your organization. My name is Eric Anderton. Appreciate you listening to Construction Genius here today. Feel free to share the podcast with anyone that you think would benefit from it and uh, give us a rating and a review wherever you get your podcasts if you haven't done that yet. And just one other thing, um, feel free to reach out to me on my website and suggest topics that you'd like me to cover in these solo shows or potential interview people, uh, people that you'd like me to interview for the Construction Genius Podcast. I'm always open to ideas and um, I'm always open to you contacting me and getting to know you a little bit better. So. Thank you again for listening and uh, have a terrific day. Today's episode was brought to you by the Construction Conclave. If you as a construction leader would like to develop your skills and get involved in a community of like-minded construction professionals who are focused on building healthy teams, profitable projects, and long-term successful businesses, then the Construction Conclave is for you. It's a private invitation-only group of construction leaders that are focused on developing their leadership skills. We do training every single month online that looks at how to become a better leader in a very practical, straightforward way. We also have other events that build community and camaraderie so that you can associate with others who are interested in developing their skills as leaders. If you'd like more information and to see if you qualify for participating in the conclave, feel free to reach out to me, eric at eric anderton.com. Thank you for listening to this episode of Construction Genius. Hope you found that 1% of inspiration to help you in the next few days. If you like the show, please give us a five-star review on iTunes, share it with other construction leaders who you think would benefit, and thanks again for listening.